Hello future nurses, welcome to our in-depth NCLEX prep session. Today we are going to explore the crucial aspects of nursing laws with the special emphasis on TODS. As a nurse, it's vital to understand these legal concepts to ensure both patient safety and your professional integrity. Let's get started on this journey of learning. Hey there, before we dive into the specifics like TODS, let's take a step back and understand the bigger picture of laws in nursing. Laws are like the rules of the road for nursing practice, guiding us on what we should and shouldn't do. I'll break it down into small pieces so it's easy to digest. Let's get started. In nursing, laws come from different sources and branches of government. Think of it like a tree with several branches. Now first we have the constitution. The constitution is like the roots of the tree, providing the foundation. It is divided into three parts. First one is legislative branch. Create statutory laws which are like the trunk, giving structure. Next one is executive branch. Implement these laws through administrative rules. Think of these as the branches that spread out. And then we have judicial branch. Interprets laws through court decisions, similar to the leaves that grow based on the branches. Now nurses need to pay attention to three main types of laws. Civil law, criminal law, and administrative law. Civil law, this is about relationship and responsibilities between people. For instance, if a nurse patient contract is broken, that is a civil law issue. Next one, we have criminal law. These laws are about actions that are offenses against society. Think of a nurse who steals medication. That's a criminal act. And then we have administrative law. This covers regulations from nursing boards or health departments, like the rules about maintaining a nursing license. When it comes to nursing practice, there are two big categories to remember, civil issues and criminal one. Civil issues often deal with the contracts and torts. The proof is most likely needed here. And criminal issues, these are serious ones, like felonies, uh, example manslaughter, or misdemeanor, like minor thefts. The proof needed here is beyond a reasonable doubt. And when we talk about torts, which are civil wrongs, we have intentional torts and unintentional torts. Intentional torts like fraud, defamation, assault and battery, false imprisonment, invasion of privacy, where there is a deliberate action to cause harm. And unintentional torts like negligence or malpractice where there wasn't intent to harm, but harm occurred because the standard of care wasn't met. And that's a quick overview of the laws in nursing. Whether it's making sure we are following the right procedure or protecting our patient's rights, understanding these laws help us to be better nurses. And remember, it's all about providing safe and ethical care within the legal guidelines. Keep these concepts in mind and you will be on solid legal ground in your nursing practice. First things first, what exactly is a tort? Simply put, a tort is a legal term for an act that causes harm to someone. In nursing, this could mean anything from accidentally injuring a patient to violating their privacy. These civil wrongs can take various forms and understanding these is key to providing safe and legally sound care. Let's look at the types of torts you might encounter in nursing. We have intentional torts like assault or battery and unintentional torts such as negligence or malpractice and here is the detailed table to illustrate these points on one side we have intentional torts like i meant to do that that kind of torts and on the other hand we have unintentional torts the oops i didn't mean that that kind of torts let's walk through this table together intentional torts assault it's about making a patient fear imminent harm, like uh, threatening a patient to perform a procedure against their will. And in battery, this involves unauthorized contact, such as administering treatment without patient consent. So there is a small difference. Assault, you are just threatening. And in battery, you are actually performing the procedure. False imprisonment. This occurs when restraining a patient without legal grounds. Invasion of privacy, 
This includes disclosing patient information without consent. And last, we have defamation, sharing false information that harms a patient's reputation. Now we have unintentional torts, negligence. This refers to failure in providing the expected standard of care, like missing essential patient monitoring. Next one, we have malpractice. This is a type of professional negligence where a healthcare provider's improper or unethical conduct, such as performing a procedure incorrectly or directly, resulting in patient harm. Malpractice is more specific to the professional's action or inactions that deviate from the accepted standards of practice in the medical community. Now we are zooming in on intentional torts in nursing field. These are not just mistakes, they are actions taken on purpose that can harm patient. It's vital to understand these to ensure you always provide compassionate and legally sound care. Let's break down what intentional torts are with some examples. Intentional torts in nursing are when a healthcare professional deliberately does something that harms a patient. This can range from physical actions to violations of a patient's rights. While these incidents are rare, they are taken very seriously. Let's dive into the different types of intentional torts to get a clearer picture. There are several types of intentional torts in nursing. These include assault, battery, false imprisonment, and invasion of privacy. Understanding each of these is crucial. Let's go through some real life scenarios to understand all these intentional thoughts. Imagine a nurse tells a patient, if you don't stay still, I will tie you to the bed. This is an example of assault as it instills fear. If the nurse actually restrains the patient without a valid reason, it becomes battery. False imprisonment could be unnecessarily using restraints or not allowing a patient to leave. And if a nurse shares a patient's health details with someone not involved in their care, it's an invasion of privacy. So the impact of intentional thoughts can be profound, not just legally, but on patient's mental and emotional well-being. They breach the trust patient places in their healthcare providers. As nurses, our job is to heal, not harm. So it's essential to always act with integrity, respect patient's rights, and adhere to the ethical standards. Now we are delving into the world of unintentional thoughts, specifically focusing on negligence and malpractice. These concepts are crucial in nursing as they involve harm caused not by intent, but by oversight or failure to meet the standards of care. Let's unpack these terms with some easy to understand examples. Let's start with basic. Negligence in nursing happens when nurse fails to take reasonable care or make an error that a competent nurse would not have made under similar circumstances. Right? And a malpractice is a type of negligence occurs when this lack of care directly violates professional nursing standards causing harm to a patient. Both involve unintentional harm, but malpractice is tied to professional duties of a nurse. To give you a clear picture, let's discuss some common types and examples. Imagine a nurse is very busy and forgets to chart a patient's medication. This will lead to accidental overdose. This is negligence, right? Now, if a nurse administer a high risk medication without proper knowledge or ignore safety protocol and the patient is harmed, it escalate to malpractice. Here, the error is more specific to the nurse's role. It is professional oversight that leads to harm. Both scenarios shows lack of proper care, but malpractice is directly related to professional responsibilities and knowledge expected of a nurse. Understanding the difference between Negligence and malpractice is viral. It helps in identifying areas where we as nurses need to be more cautious and diligent. Recognizing these issues can lead to improved patient care and safer nursing practice. Now let's talk about nursing standards. Nursing standards are the framework for our day-to-day -day excellence. These standards safeguard our patients, provide clarity in complex situations, 
and establish a benchmark for measuring the quality of care we deliver. Think of it as the backbone of our care. Now let's break down the ABCs of nursing standards and always keep these nursing standards in mind. A, A for awesome patient care. We are like superheroes for our patients, right? B, brilliant communication. It's like being a translator in a world of health. C, crystal clear documentation. If it wasn't chatted, it didn't happen. D, diligent medication management. We are the gatekeepers of meds. And E, that's for eternal student. Always learning, always growing. And remember, these are not just tasks. They are our promises to every patient. Now, we will explore specific examples that bring the concepts of malpractice and negligence to life. Let's begin. First of all, patient care. Imagine a scenario where a nurse overlooks a patient's symptoms and fails to diagnose a condition, something a competent nurse would catch. This isn't just a misstep, it's a lapse in applying specialized knowledge and skills which could have serious consequences for the patient's health. Now, consider a nurse who, during a hectic shift, unknowingly skips a routine patient check. This oversight might lead to missing critical changes in the patient's condition. Although not intentional, it's a deviation from the duty of care we owe to our patients. Next, medication management. Administering the wrong medication, even when the medication's instructions are clear, is a grave error. This kind of mistake can result from failing to double check or verify orders of fundamental expectations in nursing. Conversely, negligence might involve a nurse not noticing a change in the prescription and administering the previous medication. It's a failure to update one's action based on new information, reflecting a lapse in attentiveness. Now let's talk about documentation. Falsifying patient records or grossly mispresenting a patient's condition goes against all principles of ethical nursing practice. Right? It is a serious breach that can mislead the care team and harm the patient. And on the flip side, simply failing to record a patient's vital signs which might miss critical health trends is negligence. It's about overlooking the details that form the tapestry of a patient's health status. Next is communication. Giving incorrect or misleading information to patients or families about their care can have dire consequences and reflects poorly on our professional integrity. On the other hand, failing to Relay a critical lab result to the healthcare team might seem minor, but the ripple effect can be significant, hindering timely and appropriate care. Education and training. Performing a procedure without the necessary training is a clear cut case of malpractice. It's an action taken with knowledge of one's limitations, but proceeding regardless. However, not staying current with mandatory training may seem like a small oversight, but in the fast evolving field of healthcare, it can lead to outdated practice that compromise patient care. As we go through these examples, keep in mind that whatever it's malpractice or negligence, the outcome is the same, means our patients suffer, right? That's why understanding and preventing these errors is so crucial. It's not just about passing the NCLEX. It's about excelling in our duty to those who entrust us with their lives. And remember, malpractice is when we steer off the path of standards we are sworn to uphold, like when we might give a medication without verifying a patient's allergy status. It's a significant error, reflecting our departure from the professional care we are trusted to provide. On the other hand, negligence could be simple yet serious as overlooking a critical update in a medication chart. It's often an oversight, but the impact can be just as profound as malpractice. Both terms remind us that our vigilance is non-negotiable and our commitment to excellence, it 
is what defines us. To prevent torts, nurses must be proactive. This means obtaining informed consent, respecting patient's autonomy, adhering to the confidentiality protocols, and staying updated with the best practices. Here is a table summarizing key preventive measures for each type of tort. First one, assault. It's all about consent. Always ask for permission before any procedure and explain what you are doing. Think of it as knocking before entering someone's personal space. Next is battery. Again, consent is king. Make sure you have a clear green light from your patients before you proceed with any treatment. It's respecting their autonomy, their right to make decisions about their own bodies, right? Next one is false imprisonment. Knowing the rules like the back of your hand. Use restraints only when absolutely necessary and always within legal guidelines. It's about balancing safety and freedom, right? Next one is invasion of privacy. Confidentiality is crucial. Handle patient information with care and always adhere to HIPAA rules. Your patient privacy is a treasure chest, so keep it locked and safe. Defamation. Choose your words wisely. Professional communication is key. Avoid gossip and ensure that what you say about patient is factual and respectful. Negligence. Stick to the script of a standard procedures. Keep your skills sharp and your knowledge up to date, like a pilot going through a pre-flight checklist, right? Ensuring everything is in order before taking off. This is negligence. Malpractice. Education is your shield. Stay informed about the latest in nursing best practices. Continuous learning isn't just about growing. It's about protecting your patients and yourself, right? And remember, these are not just tips. They are crucial strategies to safeguard our patients and our practice. Let's pledge to uphold these standards and lead the way in exceptional nursing care. In this segment, we will focus on the legal aspects of nursing. The NCLEX exam thoroughly tests your knowledge on nursing standards, including understanding critical legal concepts like negligence and malpractice. It's not just about knowing these terms, but also about applying them in various clinical scenarios. Let's break down each concept with its application in the exam and your future nursing career. Informed consent. This is all about patient empowerment. On the NCLEX, expect questions that test your understanding of patients' rights to make informed decisions about their care. And remember, it's their health, their decision, right? Next one is assault and battery. These terms are about respect and concern. The NCLEX might present scenarios where you have to judge the appropriateness of physical contact or procedures. So always think, did the patient agree to this? False imprisonment. This one is about freedom. Look out for the NCLEX questions on the legal use of restraints or detaining patients. It's a fine line between safety and restricting movements. Negligence. Negligence is a failure to provide the care that a reasonable nurse would. The NCLEX will test your ability to identify situations where patient care is compromised due to a lapse in judgment or attention. Malpractice. Malpractice is a big deal. It's a professional negligence that leads to harm. On the NCLEX, be prepared for clinical scenarios that require strict adherence to the standards of care. It's about doing the right thing the right way. Next one is confidentiality. Keeping patient information private is paramount. The NCLEX will challenge you with questions about handling and sharing patient data. Always err on the side of privacy. Next, documentation. If you didn't chart, it didn't happen. The NCLEX will test your understanding of the importance of accurate and timely documentation. It's about painting a clear picture of patient care for everyone involved. Grasping these legal concepts isn't just about passing your exam, it's about being a responsible and ethical nurse. Each one is a piece of the puzzle in delivering quality care. 
Let's master these concepts and pave the way for a successful nursing career. To excel in legal aspects of the NCLEX, consider the following strategies. Understand key terms. Familiarize yourself with definitions and differences between legal terms like negligence and malpractice. Practice with scenarios. Use practice questions and case studies that focus on legal and ethical issues in nursing. Then reflect on real world examples. Think about how these legal concepts apply in actual clinical settings. Review policies and procedures. Be aware of common hospital policies that relate to legal issues in nursing. And last, stay updated. Keep abreast of any changes in nursing laws and ethics as they can impact practice and NCLEX content. Use these tips and strategies to strengthen your legal knowledge and you are sure to have a strong foundation for NCLEX preparation. Alright, let's have a look at this NCLEX SADA portion. A registered nurse in a busy ICU mistakenly administer a high dose of insulin to a diabetic patient due to misreading the physician's order. The patient subsequently suffers from severe hypoglycemia. The nurse realized the mistake but failed to report it immediately and did not document the incident in the patient's medical records. In this scenario, which action demonstrates nursing malpractice? Select all that apply. Please take a moment to think about each option. Pause the video now and when you are ready, we will discuss the answers together. Let's review the answers now. The correct options here are B, C and E. Let me explain why each of these is correct and why the others are not. Option number B, misreading the physician's order. Misinterpreting a physician's order, particularly for critical medications like insulin, is a serious mistake and a breach of standard care, making it malpractice. Option C, failing to report the medication error immediately. Delay in reporting a significant medication error prevents timely intervention and is considered a professional misconduct, qualifying as malpractice. Option E, not documenting the incident in medical records. Omitting details of medication error in medical records is a violation of nursing documentation standards falling under malpractice. Okay, now incorrect options. Option A, administering insulin to a diabetic patient. Giving insulin to a diabetic patient is a standard nursing duty and isn't a malpractice unless executed improperly. Option D, the patient suffering from severe hypertension hypoglycemia. The patient's hypoglycemia is a result of the error, not an action by the nurse, hence not marked practice in itself. Option F, the busy ICU environment. A busy work environment doesn't justify malpractice. External pressures do not excuse failure to follow standard care. Option G, that is also incorrect, the nurse's realization of the mistake. Realizing the mistake is important, but without appropriate follow-up actions, it doesn't constitute malpractice on its own, right? All right, understanding the nuances between negligence and malpractice is crucial for your legal knowledge as a nurse and for your success in the NCLEX exam. These are the practical aspects of your everyday responsibility in patient care. Keep these distinctions in mind as you prepare and you will be well equipped to tackle these questions with confidence. For more helpful NCLEX insight and strategies, don't forget to follow Adjutant Nursing Review classes. Together, we will ensure you are fully prepared to excel in your exam. Keep practicing, keep learning, and remember, you are going to be fantastic nurses. Until next time, keep smiling, stay awesome. Bye for now.